So, I, in, the, in the previous video, I mentioned I mentioned Handel on the Law, and I listened to him on the radio because it's uh, it's always fascinating to for me to hear these. Uh, well, the craziness that, you know, there, there are greedy people out there that just want to sue everybody and uh, make money for nothing. Uh, and then there's some really desperate people that, uh, that come out on his channel uh, in, in terrible circumstances. And so I wanted to talk about, uh, like today, and, and it was kind of the theme today. It was kind of weird because so many people called in. Uh, on wills and living trusts and inheritance uh, or, uh, you know, cars that uh, their mom had and their sisters want and all of this crazy stuff. And, uh, and so, you know, um, death is a uh, difficult topic. And even uh, being, well, look at me. I was in the hospital for three months with a broken neck. And uh, uh, I just give you the quick, quick rundown of that story it was... Um, I was settling my mom's estate. Uh, she only had a will, and I encouraged my parents to put together a living trust. They would. They went against my wishes. They would not do it. Um, for, and, and and I don't understand that. Uh, they said it was because of their lack of trust in me, which was bizarre. I never took a dime from them. It was it just. I don't know. My parents were weird. Uh, but they. But, well, they had also. They had a corrupt lawyer. And he told them that a will was all that they needed because he wanted to do the probate on that because he was going to make a ton of money uh, probating the uh, state. So, uh, and it wasn't, I mean, it was a big estate, but it wasn't monstrous, you know. I mean, it wasn't in the millions of dollars or anything like that. But it was significant enough that uh, they needed to, to put the, the legal framework in. And so that's what I want to talk to you about on this video, uh, how important this is. And, and listening to Handle on the Law today, I thought, you know, I need to make a video about this uh, because people are calling in and they're going, well, I, my dad, he recorded uh, his wishes in a video that I should get half the house uh, when when he dies for, for, you know, when that. No, if it's not in writing, if you don't have a will, if you don't have a, a living trust, I, I, a video <laughs> ain't going to do no damage. No, this could have been their wishes. And that's the sad thing. Okay, but you've always got greedy, greedy children or, or a greedy sister or a greedy uncle or, you know, somebody in the family is not on the up and up. It's very rare that the siblings all just go together and go, let's 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 just divide this thing evenly. It, it's not a pretty picture when people die. I'm going to tell you that right now and, and, and handle on the law today. Prove that. I mean, these people calling in. It was just, I'm just sitting there going like, oh my God. I mean, well, it, it, but the thing is that I don't understand is why the parents or the relatives or the stepmoms or the stepdads or whatever, the, the, the live-in girlfriend or whatever, I mean, you have to put these things in writing, okay, so that when you die, that the vultures don't descend. So let's just talk about my mom's estate for just one second. So when I fell down the stairs and broke my neck, the vultures descended on my mom's property. And I mean, I, had, I didn't know I had a corrupt real estate agent. She came in, she, she the, stole the jewelry, everything disappeared, including my stuff. I had, uh, I had thousands of dollars of stuff in my mom's house and it all just, just evaporated. Now, how am I going to prove that? Do I have receipts for all of that stuff? I mean, you know, so the only thing I can do is I'll file. I, I was going I, I, I was going to talk to a lawyer and he says, well, how are you going to prove it? How are you going to prove that they stole everything out of your mom's house while you were in the hospital? And of course, my mom, she had, she had hired a, um, uh, either in cahoots or a deranged uh, uh, cleaning lady, gave her half the estate and the cleaning lady just let the real estate agent just clean out the entire property. I mean, there were uh, just huge um, uh, antiques, uh, things worth thousands and thousands of dollars, and it all just disappeared and evaporated while I was in the hospital with my neck broken. So what I'm telling you is that you need to take control of these things yourself. So at the very bare minimum, <laughs> you've got to have a will, okay, and it's got to be notarized and done by an attorney, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, and you got to get the right attorney, okay, uh, make sure that, you know, they're on the up and up, because the one, the, the attorney my parents had was corrupt, he wanted to put the estate into probate, 
and recommended it against a living trust. Okay, so the ultimate vehicle to determine how your uh, estate gets dispersed is the living trust. Okay, so basically with the living trust, what you do is you say, this is where everything goes, and then you have to find a trustee. Let me explain this to you. You have to find a trustee. And so the trustee could be a friend, uh, it could be a lawyer, it could be an attorney. I mean, well, whoever you want. But the, 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 the fact that the trust is there is all that, they're, all that they're there to do is to make sure that the trust is dispersed in the fashion that you want. That's the beauty of the trust. Whereas the will, the will goes into probate and then the courts get involved and, and then they're going to say, well, you know, are you managing? And this is, this is where, you know, I had a legal case and I could have brought it up against the cleaning lady. Uh, that, that she did not, it, it, as executor of the will, uh, disperse it in a proper fashion. But the lawyer wanted $5,000 just to get started on that case and no guarantee of winning. So, you know, you're just like, okay, you know. So this was the chaos that descended around my mom's estate because all she had was a will. If she'd had a trust and she had planned for who was gonna manage that trust, and who a real estate agent was going to be, and how her goods and everything was going to be dispersed, it wouldn't have been a problem. And the same thing with your funeral. Okay, when my mom died, you know, she did have a grave site paid for, all right? But there were, she hadn't, she, and she gave me notes on the funeral home that she wanted me to, to deal with. She hadn't paid the funeral home. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm talking to the funeral home, and I'm like, well, you know, I... Uh, I, mom told me to deal with you, but you know, hasn't she paid you for her funeral? No, no, she hadn't paid us. And so then you, I call the cleaning lady and I'm like, well, do you want to come look at the urn that my mom's going to be buried in? Talk about a greedy individual. They're like, nope, nope, I don't care. You just pick it up. And now as her son, of course, the cleaning lady, I mean, why would she care what, what my, and, and then, then the cleaning lady didn't even visit. I had to go identify the dead body of my mother in the, in the, uh, in the morgue. You know, you have to do that. Uh, the cleaning lady wouldn't come and do it, you know. And no relatives uh, had actually visited my mom. I, I didn't really want them to, to be honest. Uh, she was so, she'd been starved to death at that point by the cleaning lady. Well, and I say not say by the cleaning lady, by herself. Uh, but the, the enabler, the cleaning lady, whether good, good or bad, I'm not saying that uh, she's an evil person. I, I think she tried, either she's incredibly stupid or... Um, or just wanted half the estate. I don't know. So anyway, getting back to it. So what am I going to be doing in the next series, in a coming series of videos is tomorrow I meet with the lawyer. And what I'm going to be setting up is a living trust on my estate because I, I have no relatives to leave my estate to. Uh, my brother's dead. My mom's dead. My dad's dead. All my friends are dead. So, you know, I have a few friends, but I'm not going to, I, you know, I might leave them and that's what you can do with a living trust is you can leave, you know, specific items, you know, maybe somebody I, I meet down the road, I might want to give them my car, for example, you know, I, right now everything's going into and what I'm setting up is called a foundation. You've heard of the Bill and Gates Foundation or the Clinton Foundation. You can set up your own foundation. Okay. And then you, you would designate, you have to work with the foundation. I'm working with the Ocala um, foundation and and so what we're going to do is going to take my estate and pump it into the community i want to improve the trails in the area i want to put in an obstacle course i have very specific requirements and that's what you can do with the, well with the foundation you can put in those specific requirements and with the living trust you can leave everything to the foundation so anyway the, the moral of the story is is like making a video uh, about your wishes of where you want your money to go is not going to work. If you wait till you're, you're mentally uh, unable to, to, to do things or questionable, uh, the vultures are going to swoop in. I, I hate to say it, most people in this world are not on the up and up, especially children, uh, relatives, uh, you know, I mean, hell, for example, right now, my ex-wife is getting, because I was going to give my money to the... Um, and, th and this is where, as a charity, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice, because if you work for a charity, you might want to let them know, okay? So I was going to leave a proportion 
of my uh, my estate to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society because they they helped me out when I had cancer twice. Okay, I called them multiple times. I called them at least five times, and every single time they said, "Due to the COVID." Excuse me, I shouldn't have said that on YouTube, but due to the um, continuing um, crisis, uh, we can't answer her phones. And I was just like, do I really want to leave my money to a charity that's still going along with, the, with this narrative uh, that I don't believe in? I said no. So I, I, I pulled everything out of that charity. Um, so, you know, because I could, to me, that's a woke charity as far as I'm concerned. So I, I as much as I believe in them, I, I think that from the stats that I've seen, most of the money does go to help cancer patients. And I'm not trying to diss them, but I'm just saying they're not getting my money no more. My money's going to my foundation and my foundation is going to go to help hiking trails. And I've got all kinds of thoughts. And so this is, this is what I'm setting up and we're going to make a series of videos about this, but please, God, don't be like the people that I'm listening to on Handle on the Law that, you know, their parents didn't even, some of them didn't have a will. And then, you know, and it, understand that, you know, if the husband dies, the wife gets everything or the, you know, the step, step wife or whatever, the stepfather, you know, if, if they're out, the, the, the children come next. And, and even though, I mean, like one woman today, she called in, uh, it was, uh, it was his, his sister, the guy's sister, and she took care of him for like 10 years, this, this old guy. And, uh, but he never put it in a will. So, and he hadn't seen his, his two kids in, well, she said 50 years. I, I, I met, well, 30, I think it might have been 30 years. His two kids were estranged from him. He hadn't seen them in 30 years. She had been taking care of him for like 10 years. And because there was no will other than a video, the kids that hadn't visited their father in 30 years are going to get everything. Now, if you're up in heaven or, well, hopefully purgatory or hell or whatever you want to believe, can you imagine? I mean, if, if you, you would be rolling over in your grave at this point going like, I didn't want my kids to get that. I haven't talked to my kids in 30 years. I wanted my sister to get it. Well, she's not next in line. It's the direct kin. It's the kids are going to get it. You understand that without a will or 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 uh, anyway that's it that's it for this video so I just I, I wanted to elaborate on that because listening to hand oh, by the way listen to handle on the law I love the guy he always says this is uh, questionable legal advice uh, I don't listen to a thing I got to say because I don't know what I'm talking about uh, but I and, and and these people that call in you just like holy shit I mean a lot of them are incredibly um, um, I, I, I hate to say it, stupid. <laughs> and he abuses them. But at the same time, he's trying to give them advice. And he does it in a funny way. And so I, I appreciate the radio. But the thing was, I mean, so many times, uh, you know, this woman took care of this guy for 10 years. And I want to repeat it again. Uh, her, her sister took care of her brother. And she's going to get nothing. Because the kids are corrupt. All right. Peace out. Stay free. Good, good, good to live in the free, free, free Republican state of Florida. Under the great leadership of Governor Sanctimonious.